Welcome to Learn the Sky, your online resource for learning about the stars and constellations. Welcome, my name is Janine, and in this video we're going to explore the concepts of apparent magnitude and absolute magnitude. This is one of my videos in my Versus series, which we will take a look at very similar concepts, yet different concepts in astronomy and compare the two. So let's start with apparent magnitude. Apparent magnitude is the brightness of an object as it appears to us in the night sky. But there's another type of way to measure magnitude that astronomers use called absolute magnitude. An absolute magnitude measures the brightness of a celestial object if it was placed at a certain distance from Earth. And that determined distance is 10 parsecs also known as 32.6 light years away. So when we're looking at the absolute magnitude, if we are here on Earth, we want to know how bright that star would be if it were 10 parsecs from Earth. So I'll give you an example. Aldebaran is the red eye of the bull in the constellation Taurus right there. Okay, and if you want to know more about Taurus, I've got a bunch of videos on it, so be sure to go check those out on my channel. But Aldebaran has the apparent magnitude of 0.87, but its absolute magnitude is negative 0.63. So what does this mean? Well, before we talk about the difference between the two, I just want to remind you that the magnitude scale is an inverse scale, which means it works in reverse. So the lower the magnitude of a star, the brighter the star. So in terms of absolute magnitude right here, it's a pretty bright star because it has a negative value. It's still a bright star in general. You should be able to see it with the unaided eye. Um, but what I'd like to do now is take two different stars and compare them in terms of apparent magnitude and absolute magnitude. So the star Sirius. Sirius is a famous star because it's the brightest one in the night sky, and it's actually a binary system. So it's estimated to be eight light years away, so it's really in our stellar neighborhood, pretty close to us, and it's in the constellation of Canis Major. If you want to learn more about that constellation, go see that video on my channel. So the apparent magnitude of Sirius right there is negative 1.46, but when we look at its absolute magnitude, it changes. It's positive 1.42. So this tells us that this is a it's a bright star but it may not be as bright as others out there so let's keep looking and exploring this i'm going to give you another star antares and antares is a red supergiant star if you're looking at this gorgeous constellation of scorpius it's the red star towards the upper center right here now sirius the one we were just at this is the brightest star in the night sky where this one right here is the 16th brightest star in the night sky. It's much further away, that's 604 light years away, and it's in the constellation of Scorpius. So now we're going to look at the apparent magnitude and absolute. So the apparent magnitude, it's a variable star, so it ranges from 0.6 to 1.6. So on the order of a magnitude, it can change its brightness. But when you look at its absolute magnitude, look how much it changes. It's negative 5.9, which means you're going in the brighter direction. So if you have a negative value, that means it gets brighter. So what does this mean? How is the 16th brightest star now have a larger absolute value than, say, the one Sirius right here, which has this absolute value? Well, that's all about its size and temperature. So I'm going to pull up this diagram for you, and you may have seen pictures like this before where it does a size comparison. So we were looking at Sirius and Antares. So we're going to start at number one. This is a size comparison of all the terrestrial planets. Here we have a size comparison of Earth, which was the largest thing in this in this portion of the of the picture and we compare it to the Jovian planets and as we can see Earth is much smaller than the Jovian planets. Let's go to number three. Okay we have Jupiter right here. This is Wolf uh, star Wolf 359. Okay so it's close to us in our stellar arena. We have the Sun and then we have Sirius. So 
We are looking at Sirius earlier, so Sirius is bigger than the Sun. But now we're going to keep going. Here's where Sirius is, and this is its size compared to Pollux, Arcturus, and Aldebaran. So we didn't even get to Antares yet in Scorpius. Now we're going to go to the next photo, and this is Aldebaran, and this is Rigel, and then this is Antares. So it's very difficult to conceptualize, but here, this is Aldebaran, which is right here, and that's how much bigger Antares would be than Aldebaran, but look at Aldebaran compared to Sirius. So I'm wondering, would if we would put Sirius in this photo, would it even be a pixel? I'm not even sure. But what this shows you is it allows you to see how the temperatures and sizes of stars change when you look at the absolute magnitude. Now the HR diagram, which stands for Hertzsprung-Russell diagram, is a classification system we use and a chart that will compare star color, star temperature, and luminosity, and it allows us to classify different stars. So Sirius would be up in this range, and Antares is over here. So when you're looking at this chart, you have star temperature, which also relates to its color. So the cooler stars at 3000 degrees Kelvin are going to be a reddish color. Stars that are much higher in temperature, such as 30,000 Kelvin, are going to be blue in color. And this will also determine its luminosity, which is how bright it is, and which also relates to its size. So this is such a beautiful diagram because it explains so much. I've got another version of this here, which I like because it just gives you a better idea in terms of size when we're looking for the dip, when we're comparing different sizes of stars. So again, Sirius is going to be right in this arena and Antares is going to be over here. It's a super giant star coming to the end of its life. So it's much larger even though it's much cooler. So that's why it has it that reddish color. And these letters that are across here stand for spectral class. And the, there's a mnemonic I've learned uh, throughout my years in this uh, to remember it, which is, oh, be a fine girl, kiss me. I have that right down here. So that's a way I remember spectral class. So the HR diagram is a really great tool that we can use to help us predict temperature, color, as well as brightness and estimate its size. So let's bring it back to apparent magnitude and absolute magnitude. They're similar in the sense that they are both classification systems that use um, brightness as a measurement. Okay, so we look at a star's brightness and we're able to measure it, but they're different. Apparent magnitude is brightness as it appears to the observer, where absolute magnitude is brightness from a certain distance, and that distance is defined as 10 parsecs or 32.6 light years. So how do we use this in everyday astronomy terms? Well, you can use it, at least apparent magnitude we can use when we're looking at star maps. So I have star maps like this all the time that I use um, in the different videos on my channel. And down here, you can see it gives you a magnitude scale. You should know when you're looking at this, we're looking at apparent magnitude. So what is the brightness of a star as it compares to us here on Earth? I gave you also here, this is the the location of this star Vega right here. And you can see Vega is a really bright star. It has a magnitude of zero. So, but it's absolute magnitude would be different than what its apparent magnitude is. So I hope this video was helpful for you to compare these similar yet different concepts. I really enjoy doing these versus videos because it allows us to focus on different types of content. So as you go outside, remember it takes time, patience, and practice to really learn the stars. As you go outside, make sure you're spending more than 10 minutes so your eyes can adjust to the darkness. You're going to end up seeing more. So thank you again for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below. Remember, it takes time, patience, and practice to understand and study the stars. So keep going outside and keep looking up.
If you're new to this channel, be sure to click the subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications about all new videos. If you'd like to learn about the sky in greater detail, be sure to visit my website. I've got some freebies for you to download as well as online lessons and classes for you to experience. So be sure to check them out.